Hi everyone, happy Sunday. I hope you all are having a great start to your week. Today I'll be opening up a new in box, new old stock Motorola ES400 Enterprise Digital Assistant. This was a ruggedized smartphone that Motorola released in 2010 and at least based on the date code on my ES400 was still made into the mid 2010s. The one that is in the box here, uh, the user AGK on SDF ordered and sent it to me so I could install a variety of text and voice based internet applications for her use. Everything from Telnet and SSH to internet telephone and internet radio. Before I open this up, I'll just show you mine. I have mine in this nice magnetic holster that will put the ES400 to sleep and really helps a lot with saving battery power. When I open up this holster, you will see the device come on. There you go. It runs Windows Mobile 6.5. It has a backlit keyboard, optical trackpad. I might as well update, oops, might as well update the weather. Resistive VGA 640 by 480 touchscreen. Let's update that. And it has, you know, a, a suite of apps, apps built in. Okay. Um, it has one gig of flash built in, 256 megabytes of RAM, and... Um, and a six, roughly 600 megahertz single core ARM processor. Really for Windows mobile applications, that's de pretty decent RAM and decent specs. So it's one of the latest ones that were made. Uh, yeah, so optical trackpad, backlit uh, keyboard, um, and it has, instead of the barcode scanners and a lot of the Motorola and Zebra models, it has a um, camera and also has a fingerprint reader for security. So, that, so you take a picture of the barcode with a camera, and then the device would process it for you. There's also a light sensor up there in the corner. Yeah, really nice de device. Feels solid in your hand. Ruggedized. Not quite as big and rugged, I think, as, as some of the other Motorola, Symbol, and Zebra. Windows Mobile Scanners, and again, doesn't have a real barcode uh, reader with a... Um, what is it, a strobe light or, or a laser, but, you know, works great and probably uses a lot less power for that. Anyway, I love mine, and I use mine for internet telephone for the most part with, with SDF. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put that away and show you what's in the box. And pretty soon I'll get this set for Anna to have fun with telephone and text-based internet apps. Okay, so I'm going to open up that box. There's your ES400 inside some plastic. Uh, the battery's not inside, but you can see it's it's the same. And I'll, I'll need to thread in the um, little cable lanyard to keep the stylus from falling out, which is a nice touch. Um, there's the stylus holder. A pretty impressive power supply. Um, it's impressive not because it comes with all the other adapters. Say if you wanted to take this to another country, say Europe for this adapter. So I'll go ahead and close that back up. Um, keep this outside. Uh, there's a quick start uh, guide down there. Oops, quick start, quick, uh, quick start guide. Uh, USB cable, and um, I'll go ahead and put this in during the video. A very, very nice extended battery. And okay, so it works on the MC45 as well. That gives you at least 10 hours of, of uh, battery life. That's quite, quite good. Most models most Windows mobile smartphones of this era had 1500 mAh hour batteries, and now it's four or five hours. So you can listen to your internet radio station over Wi-Fi for quite a long time. 
Anyway, and then below that is the, um, let's see, quick start guide and regulatory guide. And yeah, this is nice. It tells you how to do everything and where everything is on the, on the machine. Secondary microphone. Um, yeah, yeah. Again, a, a very nicely covered headset port and micro USB port. Okay. Um, yeah, I think what's really nice about this is a lot of models at the time had a 320 by 240 pixel display. This one's full VGA 640 by 480, so very high resolution and quite nice to look at. Um, but definitely, yeah, it's ruggedized. Um, I might go ahead and just open this up, slide that out. Oh, there we go. That came unclipped, and that's where I might put in the battery. Set that down. Open up the battery and put it inside, and let that charge. Uh, oh, oh! Before I do that, I should point out if you want to put in the SIM card. That's the top of those two pieces. Oh, yeah, that's the top of the two pieces there. Is the SIM card? I think this pulls out. Um, oh, okay, so it pushes in. And then that comes out. Yes, yeah, so you push it in for that to come out. And then I think it's similar for the um, micro, micro SD. Oh, okay, so that put, yeah, that also pushes in. Um, and so you can extend that with, with micro HSD or micro, micro HSD, micro SD HC cards. Okay. And then this goes out to lock. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put the battery in. Um, that went in and then I put in that orange clip okay. I'll take the cover and put it back on but really I think this is the pinnacle of mid to late 2000s PDAs there we go so that's sealed on hopefully that turns on oh it does and we'll see that boot up Okay, well, I'm going to let that boot up, continue to boot up. I'll just set it down in here. And while that goes, I might go ahead and show you some of the applications, or, or not, the applications that I have on my already set up ES400 that I might get ready for Anna. Okay. Screen alignment. Uh, let's see. It is... Oh, oh, I guess I'll get to that in a second. So today is May 2, 2021. Uh, okay. May 2. And what's the time? Huh, it is 7.09. 
that's pretty good. Uh, I'll skip. Skip. Okay. Nice. So that will need to be charged. Anyway, so this is going to be set up for Anna pretty soon. I'll go ahead and put that away. No SIM card. Don't activate CDMA. Okay. So I'll just let that go to sleep. And now I'll give you a treat, a little uh, treat of some of the apps that you can run on your ES400. So I don't think I need the keyboard down. I'll just tilt this a little bit further down and out. The best ES400. There we go. That looks pretty nice. Okay. So I have a ton of apps installed in mine. Just show some of them. And generally, the performance is pretty smooth. I don't know, you know, how how much multitasking you can get away with. I think two or three apps open is okay. I have the SIP SIP configuration tool for the built-in SIP client, which has some advantages over PortGo, which is the main soft phone I've been using with SDF. Uh, there's Opera Mini for web browsing and RSS Reader. That's okay. Zax for interactive fiction, Free42, Pocket IRC, that works nicely. I don't use Forf so much. SJ Phone doesn't quite work smoothly on this, but that's another um, soft phone. Uh, GS Player for music. SPB Radio, that will do internet radio. Let's give a little taste of that. Can open this up. Yeah, so there's SDF and on radio, which I'll definitely have set up for Anna. Okay, close, and yeah, if you want to see the running programs, you just uh, pull down from the top. And that's also important to remember for when you want to set up wireless, which I'll get to in a second. Anyway, so I'll close that, click OK, go back to start and show you more applications. Yeah, so we saw SPB Radio, Total Commander's nice, PPC Pack is for PPC, uh, PPC Planet App Catalog, and you can install other applications there. Core Player, which I think is really the best media player you can get for Windows Mobile, another Opera version, Python. Uh, something really important is the IBM Mighty P 2.0 Virtual Machine. This works best, I think, for the middlet Java applets that I'm going to install for Anna and and Putty, which I have configured for different BBSs and other servers to log in via Telnet or SSH. Yeah. So I have a SDF default, Atrium BBS. Um, you could log into MUDs, MUDs as well. I think I found a MUD client, but I wasn't able to install it or, or something, something like that. Okay, so yeah, so those are some of the apps I have installed. I also have some games, but I won't um, show those all in this video. Uh, the most important things you want to do with this are probably send files or connect to things via Bluetooth and then connect to Wi-Fi. And then after that, everything's pretty straightforward. Uh, to do that, like before, you want to go to the top menu. This first tab shows you running programs. This shows you storage. You can see how much device storage. Again, it's one gig, but only half a gig is open for the user. How much RAM is available, SD card, um, sound profiles, and then over here, the three bars uh, going up shows you uh, battery remaining, whether the phone radio is off, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and you can toggle that. Um, Alarms. Okay, so this F here for uh, Fusion is the wonky little um, wireless manager tool. 
uh, probably profiles and certs you don't want to care you don't care about so much. This is for scanning for um, wireless networks. Um, and this is a, it was a bit wonky for me, but I I think after you know putting in the WPA PSK code on one of these and then saving the profile and rebooting, you sh it should automatically um, associate itself with with those um, Wi-Fi hotspots. Anyway, so that's all I'll say about those um, wireless manager. I guess you know can show you. Uh, what you're associated with. I think what you want to do is is first wireless LANs and then let me click one that I haven't um, associated with before. Uh, refresh. Um, and you should be able to create a profile to help associate with the network in this in this uh, column. Okay. Yeah, it should be in fine WLANs if I can get this uh, going. Oh, there you go. Okay, so I was clicking on the wrong thing. Yeah, um, create profile. And, yep. Yeah, I'm going to cancel this just so I don't show the password. Um, yeah, and then you put in authentication type and security mode. Uh yeah. Next. Uh, yeah. Passphrase. Okay. So anyway, so you get you get the idea. You want to click on the network and find WLANs, and then create a profile. Put in the key. Uh, you know, go through all these steps. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, I'm not putting in that key. Uh, yeah, um, so that's the basic idea. Highlight a, a, a WAN network and then connect to um, by creating a profile. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, so hopefully you all could see that. That's really the hardest part with, with getting the um, ES400 set up. I think everything else is pretty straightforward. But it works very nicely. You get a uh, very fast connection. Um, you can set up proxies for Internet Explorer to get around SSL issues, although Opera will deal with that. Um, I think you can adjust the, the, the tab or the buttons that you see in the entry screen. Um, nice optical trackpad and so on. But anyway, so that's just a quick tutorial for the ES400. And I'm going to finish getting this um, set up pretty soon. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe as always.